Hello and welcome to our newscast. I'm Hong Jie, live from Seoul. Our top story this morning, regions affected by Typhoon Chaba this week are bracing for more severe weather from tonight through Saturday morning. Heavy rain is forecast in southern regions overnight, including Jeollanamdo Province, Jeju Island, Chungcheongnamdo Province, and even parts of southern Gangwondo Province. Up to 120 millimeters of rain is forecast in some areas accompanied with thunder and lightning. Authorities are warning about the possibility of landslides and flooding, so take the necessary precautions if you're in those areas. The latest round of bad weather will come around 72 hours after Typhoon Chaba killed seven people and left three others missing in Busan, Ulsan and Jeju Island. The cleanup costs are expected to cost millions of dollars. The government it says it'll come up with a detailed restoration plan by the end of the month. And a scene of devastation is also emerging from the Caribbean island of Haiti two days after it suffered a direct hit from Hurricane Matthew. The government says more than 100 people were known to have died. U.S. President Barack Obama has declared a state of emergency in Florida as the potentially catastrophic storm is due to make landfall there very soon. Park jong reports. Hurricane Matthew has left a trail of destruction in Haiti and is on a collision course with the southeastern United States. The fiercest Caribbean storm in nearly a decade claimed scores of lives in Haiti, flattening more than 3,200 homes and inundating entire neighborhoods. Now, the impoverished nation is bracing for a likely surge in waterborne diseases, including cholera. According to the Pan American Health Organization, ever since a cholera outbreak began in 2010, more than 9,000 Haitians have died and 790,000 infected by contaminated water. The Category 4 storm, the second highest hurricane classification, is now close to the U.S. state of Florida, packing sustained winds of 225 kilometers an hour. President Obama has declared a state of emergency in Florida. Mass evacuations are underway in the state after Governor Rick Scott issued urgent warnings to residents. The potential wrath of Hurricane Matthew has triggered a mass exodus out of the Sunshine State. Residents have stocked up food and bottled water and battened down the hatches, doing what they can to protect their homes as they seek safety inland. It's too early to tell where exactly Matthew might hit the hardest. The National Hurricane Center's warning was extended up from southern Florida through Georgia and into South Carolina. And more than 12 million people in the U.S. are reportedly under hurricane watches and warnings. Park Jong hong Arirang News. South Korea's top diplomat says it's time to consider even harsher measures against North Korea in response to the regime's continual provocations. Speaking with Seoul-based Yonam news agency in Brussels on Thursday, Yoon byung has said encouraging countries to sever or sharply limit diplomatic relations with Pyongyang is an effective way of punishing the North. He noted that an article in the UN Charter says all UN members should enforce non-military measures like severing diplomatic ties when a country ignores its international obligations. Minister Yoon said talks for talks sake merely allows North Korea to buy time, adding that dialogue should only resume once Pyongyang shows a clear will to abandon its nuclear weapons. He also said the international community should deal with North Korea's grave human rights violations in conjunction with efforts to denuclearize the regime. Threatening comments emanating out of North Korea state-run media outlets seem to be reaching a crescendo. According to North Korea media output aggregator, the Washington-based Korean Central News Agency Watch on Friday, the threat index gauging how threatening the comments are currently stands at 0.4. And that means articles with aggressive expressions take up around 40 percent of all news reports. The figure marks the same as those posted in 1999 and 2013 when they hit record highs. In 1999, a series of clashes between the two Koreas took place near the northern limit line, while Pyongyang conducted its third nuclear test in 2013. 
After the North conducted its fifth nuclear test on September 9th, the South Korean government said Pyongyang is capable of carrying out another nuclear test at any time the regime chooses. And some exciting news for movie lovers in Korea. This year's Busan International Film Festival, arguably the biggest in Asia, kicked off Thursday with an impressive lineup of world premieres and award-winning films. Our EG1 was there for the opening night and followed this report. Residents of Busan may still be cleaning off from the effects of Typhoon Chaba, but that hasn't put a damper on the excitement for the city's premier event. The Busan International Film Festival, which kicked off on Thursday, invites over 150 directors and movie stars from around the world to share their talents, from popular Korean actress Park so Dam to Shuleiman Sisei, a prominent African film director and a juror for one of the festival awards. The festival, which is Asia's largest, features roughly 300 films from 70 countries, including over 120 world and international premieres and numerous award-winning films from this year's Cannes Film Festival. And to celebrate its support for Asian films and directors over the years, the festival will open and close with Asian films in the spotlight. The Iraqi film The Dark Wind by director Hussein Hassan will close the festival, while a Korean film will serve as the opening act for the first time in five years. A Quiet Dream by Korean-Chinese director Chang Lu is about a young woman who owns a small bar and three men who wish to win her heart. Filmed in black and white, the atmosphere retains a dreamlike quality that draws the audience into the story. The festival also features a series of public events, including forums, master classes, and open talks, where the directors and actors can share their insights with audiences. Easy one, Arirang News, Busan. And that wraps it up for now. I'm Hong Jie. Do join us again at 10 a.m. Korea time for more updates with Mark Room, and goodbye.